overtime, but now out to the lake in Mike Tirico. And Chris, it is a perfect night on the south shore of Lake Erie. Two of the great franchises in NFL history, the Cleveland Browns and the New York Giants. The Super Bowl champions are undefeated and still lay claim to the title. Best in the game. The Browns, lofty expectations have met harsh reality head on. Their margin for error is disappearing. We welcome you to ESPN's Monday Night Football Launch, engineered by the GMC, Sierra. From the place where Monday Night Football began, Cleveland, Ohio, the Browns and the Giants on Monday Night Football, and the fans of the Dog Pound ready to roar. Good evening. We welcome you to the wrap up of week six. It's been five years since Monday Night Football has been here in Cleveland. It's great to be back in Northeast Ohio. Well, there were a lot of expectations and buildup. The Browns won 10 games last year, just a tiebreaker shy of making it into the playoffs. But what's happened at the start of the season? Not so much. One and three. There's a little bit of heat on the head coach, a little bit of heat on the quarterback. There is some feeling that if the Browns don't get this win tonight, the season could swing even farther south. And then on the other side, you have the Giants. Every meaningful game in 2008, they've won before the end of the playoffs last year and the four to start this season. As we bring in Ron Jaworski and Tony Kornheiser, guys, Giant fans, and we know a bunch of them back in New York, Tony, yeah. they are in heaven because they've never been able to stand on the mountaintop and say, we have the best offense in football. And statistically, they do right now. No post-Super Bowl hangover. No, and that's confused a lot of so-called experts and maybe some of us because when you go into this year, what is there in Eli Manning's resume to indicate he's going to be a great quarterback all the way through the next year? The Giants were downgraded because of a bunch of things, including Michael Strahan retiring, Jeremy Shockey being traded, O.C. Humaniora out for the year with an injury. People looked at the Giants all across the country and they said they're not going to be as good as they were. And they're right. They're not as good. They're better. <laughs> but, Tony, when you look at the Giants, they've built on that success they experienced a year ago. And I found it interesting talking to Coach Tom Coughlin that they have to win the physical battle to be successful. And if you look on the offensive side of the football, it does start with the power running game behind Brandon Jacobs and a very athletic offensive line. You'll see the eye formation with Brandon Jacobs and Rich Seibert and Chris Snee, athletic guards that can get out in front. They will pull to the left. Here's the misdirection. I love the ball fake action right here, but this will be the handoff, and then you will see after the handoff, the safeties and the linebackers will hit this play. Once you get them flowing the wrong way, now you see Jacobs with the cutback. He gets into the open field. Misdirection, the running game sets up the play action pass game. Again, look at the ball extension. Now what does that do? It forces corners to look in the backfield. They think run. It forces safeties look in the backfield. They think run, and what do you get? Dominic Hickson over the top for the big play in the passing game. Certainly the foundation is the running game, but if you look at this Giants offense right now, they have all the dimensions it takes to be consistent on offense all season long. And it gets better. Flexico Burris suspended for the last game, comes back for this one. Now on the other side, the quarterback in this game who starts and did go to the Pro Bowl, Derek Anderson, he's the worst starting stats of any quarterback in the National Football League this year. He has no Kellen Winslow out with an illness that's undisclosed for Winslow's desire. Uh, at this point, Jaws, I think we have to ask you, how in the world do the Browns win the game tonight? Well, they got to run the football. You know, a quarterback's best friend when you're struggling is the running game. If you look at the Browns through their first three games, they averaged 17 called runs. Not enough. In their win against Cincinnati, they had 37 called runs in that game, and it was Jamal Lewis. He is the power back that has to get the running game going, and Lawrence Vickers is a beast as a fullback. He will lead Jamal Lewis. We ask ourselves, how important is this game for the Cleveland Browns? And Braylon Edwards told us the other day, if we win this, those three losses, they didn't happen. So this could be the pivotal game for the Browns this season. One way or the other. And you're going to have more on Eli Manning, a quarterback whose play has been, well, nonstop solid since the beginning of 2008. on NASN. After a shift to power in the AFC, the Broncos will be looking to capitalize on a weakened Patriots team in New England. Denver Broncos versus the New England Patriots. Coverage starts with ESPN's Monday Night Countdown. This Monday, only on NASN. In 
Cleveland. A lot of Cleveland Giants, great games over the years, and great names like Otto Graham and the Gipper, the legendary battles between Sam Huff linebacker and the best running back of them all, Jim Brown. Why were these teams so familiar in the 50s and 60s? They're in the same division. They combined to win 17 of the 19 division titles. It's only their third meeting in Cleveland in 34 years, the last time the Browns had a home win over the Giants, 1973. We welcome you into our high definition home. You can see the entire telecast of your home on ESPN HD. Presented by Sears, our captains of video greet you with a good evening, Cleveland. <laughs> very sad. What a crew. Yeah. Uh, speaking of things that have gone very well, Eli Manning. Can you believe one year ago, if I would have said guys will be in Cleveland, we'll say Eli Manning. Life couldn't be any better for him. But that's the truth right now, Tom. Well, for years, Eli Manning was the other Manning. He was the Manning who wasn't Peyton Manning or Archie Manning, for that matter. His first few years with the New York Giants, everybody found fault with Eli. Passing percentage, way too low. He threw way too many interceptions. He just didn't have it. Why did the Giants trade Phillip Rivers for him? The Chargers got the better of that deal by miles. Why didn't the Giants take Ben Roethlisberger? Roethlisberger won the Super Bowl. It got even worse when Peyton won the Super Bowl and Giants fans howled. How did Eli get to be the number one overall pick? If his name was Schwartz, he'd have gone in the third round. And then last November, when Eli threw four picks against the Vikings, Giants fans were ready to toss him into the East River. And then a miracle happened. Eli stopped throwing interceptions, and the Giants won three straight road playoff games. And then the Super Bowl, where Eli beat Tom Brady. Yeah, that Tom Brady. And this season, the Giants never lose, and Eli is great. Nobody says Rivers and Roethlisberger are better than Eli anymore. That barroom argument, that one is gone. And now the barroom argument is, who's better, Eli or Peyton? And right now, this season, even with the studly game that Peyton had yesterday, God forgive me, it actually might be Eli. What if Peyton were the other Manning? Unbelievable, huh? You know we see Peyton in a couple of weeks. Oh, no. Can I take it back? No, it's too late. Too late. Too late. Too late. They'll be playing undefeated Tennessee. The Giants are the team that's undefeated on a roll against Cleveland next. You've been watching ESPN's Monday Night Football launch, engineered by the GMC Sierra, the official vehicle of Monday Night Football. Have worked. GameDay.com is your destination for everything game day. Get closer to the guys. Not so fast, my friends. Sneak behind the scenes of the set and check out the latest on the game day matchup. Log on to collegegameday.com now. Sunday Night Football on NASN. First up, the Buffalo Bills are getting it done in the AFC East as they host the Chargers. Then in the NFC, Aaron Rodgers struggles to recapture early season form as the Packers welcome the Colts. And finally, the Seahawks travel to Tampa in fighting spirits after a slow start to their campaign. A live NFL triple header. Coverage starts with ESPN's NFL Countdown. This Sunday, only on NASN.
on the lake here in Cleveland 72,300 strong Cleveland Brown Stadium there usual enthusiasm tempered by the one and three start by this city ready to show off on Monday Night Football it's been five years and they'll get a chance right away as the Browns will receive Tom Coughlin's team to kick off Tom the oldest coach in the National Football League with the championship coach in his fifth season with the Giants he and Romeo Cornell go back to the late 80s and early 90s as they were assistants together on Bill Parcells Giants team that won Super Bowl 25 Romeo's 61 years old second oldest coach for the National Football League part of five Super Bowl titles during his assistant days. Joshua Cribbs, very good kick returner, back deep to receive. And Giants fans uh, have been wondering about their kicking situation. It's John Carney again tonight, not Lawrence Thomas. Thank God for Coughlin and Cornell, or I'd be the third oldest <laughs> coach in the NFL. <laughs> Set to go. Off we go on a Monday night from Cleveland. Cribbs didn't catch it. And a dubious beginning for the Browns. Take over the 20 on the touchback, and here comes Derek Anderson, 25 years old, fourth year out of Oregon State. Look, National Football League has become a good passing league. When your completion percentage is under 50%, that is bad, and it's the worst of the guys who started every game this year. And, Mike, he's been erratic with his throwing, and he's had a number of drop balls by his wide receivers. The combination is not very good. I believe tonight they'll go with the power running game early. Anderson. Represented the AFC in the Pro Bowl last year. First snap from the 20, first throw. Nowhere near Dante Stallworth, who's on the field for the first time. We have a flag tonight to start. John Parry, our referee. And penalty on the Browns. It's a shock. They only have nine a game. <laughs> Illegal formation. Number 72 offense. That penalty has been declined. Second down. I talked to Phil Savage, the GM, today about Derek Anderson, and he talked about the concussion, you know, during uh, the exhibition season. And Braylon Edwards had a slow start, dropping passes and stuff like that. Stallworth not on, on the field. Joe Jurvicius out. I'll, I'll let the play go and then get to Savage's analysis of Derek Anderson. Steve Hyden in a tight end for Kellen Winslow out tonight. First run. With Jamal Lewis left to declining the penalty. They get six on the run. Third and four coming up. All right, so, so he's got this great arm, but he's got receivers now who are smaller this year than they were last year. And he's trying to be perfect. And Savage says that it's like in baseball, they've shrunk the strike zone on him. And so, you know, he's not as accurate as he should be. And he says, with a shrunken strike zone, you know, he's a gunslinger, a mad bomber. He's got to throw his way out of it. But George, if he misses, they're going to pull I don't agree with that at all. At all. You still have Braylon Edwards, Ed Keller Winslow. You had big targets. Jason right in the back, third and four. He picked up the blitz. It's caught by Edwards taking off. Braylon Edwards breaking out of a tough start to this season. Big game to the 25-yard line. A pickup of 49. Well, why not go to a wide receiver 6'3", 250? Man coverage on the outside. You'll see the good stick to the outside on Aaron Ross. That gets Edwards to the inside. And, of course, the perfect throw right on the belt buckle. You're going to make that catch. Good job by Anderson getting on his toes, delivering the football. Biggest gain of the year passing, right? It, it, for the entire team, it doubles yes. their longest yes. gain of the year, which was a 24-yard run. Can't boo the guy if he does that. By Jamal Lewis. Great block by Jason Wright to pick up the pressure from the Giants. And from the 25, here goes Lewis up the middle. Gain of eight hard-running yards. Get you uh, acquainted with the Browns. Lewis is going to see the majority of the work. Ninth year still can be a good power back. We mentioned Edwards struggling in the first four games. And Jaws, I told you Kellen Winslow not playing tonight. What does that do to the Browns offense? Yeah, they miss his versatility. You know, Winslow was an excellent blocker as well as a deep threat. That means Lawrence Vickers is going to have to pick up the blocking. And Steve Hyden, yeah, he can catch the short pass, but he's not going to stretch the field like Kellen Winslow. See Ryan Tucker making his season debut. Hip injury missed the first four games. Second and two, right back to Lewis. Through the middle of the Giants' defense, tackled by Justin Tuck. First down for Cleveland. 
at the 13 yard line. It seems like a long time ago that Jamal Lewis had that 2,000 yard season. It was back in 2003. What kind of a back is he now? You know, he's a power running back. He's downhill. You know what the Giants will try to do is get him to bounce to the outside. If he keeps those shoulders parallel to the line of scrimmage, he will get positive yards. Right now, the Browns are turning this into a manhood game. Come off man on a man and win at the line of scrimmage. And by 47, Lawrence Vickers, the uh, fullback, and a penalty marker down. Ball start. Number 65 offense. Five-yard penalty. First down. Former Pro Bowler Eric Steinbach, second procedure flag on the Browns. That's two penalties. Seven to go to get their average. The second most penalized team in the National Football League. And those are dumb penalties. You know, legal procedure, lining up incorrectly. Those are dumb penalties. You know, you don't mind the, the penalties of aggression where you're hitting someone or getting after someone. But those, those just aren't smart. And that's how you lose football games. First and 15. Fake the throw. Lewis tackled by Tuck. Gain of about two yards. Speaking of Justin Tuck, let's go through the Giants defense. Strahan retired. OCU Manure out for the season, hanging in our studio tonight. They still get pressure from all over. Yeah, it's a very aggressive, blitzing style of defense under defensive coordinator Steve Spagnola. And one guy I want everyone to watch tonight, and that is Justin Tuck. Uh, he's, he's the Where's Waldo of defense this year. He's a defensive end, defensive tackle, inside, outside, standing up, a linebacker. He drops into pass coverage. Justin Tuck does it all for the Giants. Browns hope Tuck and Kiwanuka will allow them to run the ball. Not as stout as the Giants were against the run a couple of years ago. Anderson loses the snap, able to get it back. So a procedure penalty and a uh, fumbled exchange leave the Browns third and long at the 16. Well, we talked about the pressure. That's the Giants' style of defense. They were bringing the house on that second down play. They had everyone down in the box, bump and run on the outside. Derek Anderson trying to get away from that blitz pressure. A little bit too quick. Pulled out, and the ball dropped on the ground. Giants go with a half dozen defensive backs on third and 15. And Jason Wright checks back in the game for the Browns. Anderson's throw complete. First Browns catch for Dante Stallworth. Tackled by Kevin Dockery. Fans unhappy, not with Stallworth, but that the Browns just got a few yards out of it. Stallworth, quad injury, didn't play the first four. Has been with New Orleans, a year with Philly, a year with New England. Now here with Cleveland at a field goal attempt coming up. See, but that's what it's about. It looked like a very promising drive. Drive stalls, maybe you get a field goal out of it. I think they have only four touchdowns all year. That's it. We're in the fifth game. They got four touchdowns. Phil Dawson has six field goals. This one from 28 yards. And the punter, Dan Zastadil, put it down in the Browns. Opening drive and on the board. The big play was 49 yards to Braylon Edwards. Jamal Lewis did some hard running on the drive. The Giants will take the field down three. Saved by zero. Four fast talking American sports got, riders oh, right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Right. We got Rex right. Rex. Don't miss them get muted every day on Around the Horn weekdays on NASN, your source for North American sports. Horsey! Romo, play fake, throws it in the end zone, Jason Witt! Romo, shotgun, looks right, looks left, now fires over the middle, touchdown! Romo throws over the middle, touchdown, that's four for quarterback Tony Romo. We're down in NFL Phillips, let's go! The NHL is back, and NASN has you covered. He scores! Don't miss the big hits. Whoa. The league's brightest stars. And all the fantastic finishes. Watch over 200 live games this season, including the All-Star Game, the playoffs, and the 2009 Stanley Cup Finals. Stanley Cup. Live from the U.S. and Canada, we take you right into the action. NASN, your home for the NHL.
80 degrees has uh, yielded this spectacular night. Not yet a full moon, guys. It's 98 percent. How much more do you need? Look, <laughs> tomorrow at four o'clock. Really? Four o four p.m. If Sadly, you're still I won't be here. You won't be here. Well, that's when we'll get. But, uh, but the moon lasts over the rest of the country, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Good. So I'll see it somewhere. It will follow you. <laughs> the Hunter's Moon. It's October. Right. Know that I'm on Bradshaw. I'll back go out and get a bow and arrow by 315 to receive the kickoff. A short kickoff by Dawson, and Giants got to get on it, and they finally do. As uh, Darcy Johnson was very aware of that short kickoff that uh, came to the ground, so the Giants take over 28 Super Bowl MVP on the field when you come back. If you. Sunday Night Football on NASN. First up, the Buffalo Bills are getting it done in the AFC East as they host the Chargers. Then in the NFC, Aaron Rodgers struggles to recapture early season form as the Packers welcome the Colts. And finally, the Seahawks travel to Tampa in fighting spirits after a slow start to their campaign. A live NFL triple header. Coverage starts with ESPN's NFL Countdown. This Sunday, only on NASN. I'll trade you a Red Sox home jersey and a Rangers t-shirt for that Pirates jacket. No way! I want that Cardinals hoodie and that Braves away uniform and an item to be named later. You drive a hard bargain. Majestic Athletic, the official uniform supplier for all 30 Major League Baseball teams. Available now all over Europe at NASN.com. It was a day like any other in Moscow. Thousands of Spartak fans brave the bitter cold to see their beloved team play Holland's Harlem. Spartak were winning 1-0, one minute before the final whistle, they scored again. What ensued can only be described as one of the greatest tragedies in football. The Soviet media called it an accident in which some were injured. More than 300 people are thought to have lost their lives that day. ESPN Classic gives you the truth behind the Moscow football disaster. Monday, 20th of October at 2200 on ESPN Classic. Middle, yeah, it's going to be a tough squeeze throw, but you back shoulder that throw. Derek Anderson right now isn't comfortable enough to make that throw. He'd rather go to the little drag route underneath. Eli and the Giants take over at the 28. Brandon Jacobs left side, pounding forward. As he always has that uh, six foot four, 264 pound frame, gain of seven for Jacobs. What, what is Corey Williams thinking, saying if you hit him early in the game, he'll start tiptoeing around? It, it looked like he was making progress going forward on that one, didn't you? He weighs, he weighs more, I believe, Jacobs, than seven different guys on the Cleveland starting defense. No question. He moves the pile, and Brandon Jacobs is the essence of the power running game in the National <laughs> Football League. Yeah. You're, you're talking Corey Williams, the Cleveland defensive lineman this week, called out Jacobs, said, if you hit him hard, he will not run as hard as the game goes on. Really? <laughs> Second and three. Eli's first throw underneath Steve Smith, the third receiver. Big add to this offense over the last few years. First down. And a gain of 10 for this uh, Giants offense that uh, continues to run at high efficiency, leading the league in points, 32 a game, yards, 431. Plexico Burr is back from his one-game suspension. And Ron, there are five offensive linemen starting their 21st game together. Yeah, and the burden is on the interior of that offensive line tonight with Seibert, O'Hare, and Sneak. They must block that 350-plus pound nose tackle, Sean Rodgers, one of the best in the NFL. Jacobs going left side for the game of five and a half, maybe six yards. Dequel Jackson and Andre Davis make the tackle. I omitted one key word, 21st straight game together for that giant offensive line. Yeah, that's that's critical because you get the non-verbal communication from the offensive line, and you'll see Brandon Jacobs here. Good body on a body by the Giants up front, just creating that seam. Look at the pad level. He delivers the blow and moves forward. Yards after contact, one, two, three. Every single time Brandon Jacobs touches the football, that's why you average almost six yards per carry. It's like a medieval battering ram that's used to break down the front door of the fort. Giants go five wide, but one of them is Madison Hedgecock, the fullback up at the top of the screen. Eli comes to his second tight end, Michael Matthews. 
first down into Cleveland territory at the 36 yard line and Cleveland's defense giving little resistance right here let's spin you through the Browns defense and Josh you mentioned the guy up front Sean Rogers what kind of an impact does he have on that nose you know he's a terrific nose tackle but the nose tackle will just eat up people inside the linebackers for Cleveland must play very well the Giants love the misdirection plays and if you lose your gap discipline if you lose your overall discipline Jacobs won't get the four yard run he'll get the 40 yard run Rogers on that nose came over via trade from Detroit in the offseason they're missing two defensive ends in Robert Smith and Sean Smith. Manning for Kevin Boss. Too high for the tight end. An incomplete second down coming up. Charles, we love it when you when you talk football. We say gap discipline. Mike and I love that terminology. It's later on, you're going to go two gap and a gap. I'm just trying to school you, Tony. I'm just Fabulous. trying to, you know, lay a little knowledge on you. Ron, this is what you were talking about before. Eli and the trust of these five guys together. Absolutely critical, and, and I, I use the term non-verbal communication. These guys have worked together so long, they know instinctively what each other is going to do. Haven't had a ball thrown to Burris yet. He's at the bottom of the screen. Eli changing the play. Play clock at two. It'll be a Jacobs run. He calls Jackson out of Maryland. Waiting, and you see a lot of uh, Browns jerseys around Jacobs. That's what it takes to do tonight. Now, uh, we mentioned Burris down at the bottom of the screen. Remember, he was suspended for two weeks, one game, because one of them was the Giants' bye week. After not showing up for a Giants practice, start of the back bye week, taking his 21 month old son to daycare slash school. Came back on Monday, met with Eli Manning, met with Tom Coughlin, addressed his team. Has uh, by all accounts been terrific at practice this week. Repentant and ready to return. He's at the top of your screen. Eli's looking his way. Eli's throwing his way. It's intercepted by Bradley Poole of the Browns. To the 30 yard line, second interception of the year for Manning. The biggest change in Eli Manning from the beginning of the playoffs to now has been not throwing those interceptions. Only his second this year, but he threw a bunch in every other year. He's got to keep them off the field, John. Pardon the interruption, but I'm Mike Wilbon. Tony, we talk American sports. So how do you think our show translates in Europe? I'm Tony Kornheiser, probably pretty poorly, especially like in Romania. ESPN's Pardon the Interruption. Join Tony and Mike for all the latest opinions and headlines weeknights only on NASN. Adrian Peterson getting his first touchdown in week one on a screen and a flat. Watch this. Peterson caught 35. Runs through the defense. That's his first National Football League touchdown. It went for 60 yards, and the 4-4 was in play for the final 40. It's kind of hard to explain it, you know, to a, you know, explain it with the feeling, but it felt so good in the leap in the crowd. You know, that that's something I always dreamed about doing. So uh, that was exciting also. For Wilson baseball gloves and much more, visit NASN.com. Turnover of the year for the Giants as giving Cleveland the ball at their own 29. For Brodney Poole out of Oklahoma, his fifth career interception now in his third year as a starter. Yeah, and Brodney Poole did a real nice job of reading Eli Manning on that play. It came with a five man pressure, man to man with the free safety, and Eli's eyes took him to the ball. Flash formation that means the quarterback's Joshua Cribs out of Kent State here in Ohio. 
so everybody's got a little wildcat in them. What Miami has done the last couple of weeks, wildfire through the league, and Cribs, the former college quarterback. Yeah, and you'll see right there, there's Joshua Cribs in the backfield, normally a wide receiver. He's played some quarterback in his high school days, and you can see right there, Atlanta ran a little option and took it up the field. The wildcat formation is spreading around the National Football League. Cribs, very good quarterback at Kent State, very complete quarterback. A uh, running first, then throwing quarterback. And uh, the guy who the Browns have identified as their wrinkle. After the first down, Anderson swinging to Jamal Lewis. Just move the open field by Lewis. Gain of four just shy of the 45 yard line. Ron, have they shown that formation that they call it their flash formation? Has Cleveland showed it much this year? No, they haven't shown it this season. They were working out it in practice as we saw on Saturday. We were out there. It's just a little wrinkle. Now you got all the Cleveland, uh, excuse me, the New York coaches around the sideline. You know, they're making adjustments. The next time the defense comes off the field, they're going to have to make adjustments. Just kind of disorient the defense a little bit. It seems to work. Formation Lewis, those feet moving to the right, gains about three yards and a very manageable third and about two and a half coming as uh, we get some pushing and shoving post play. It is sort of interesting that, um, well, in all sports, but certainly in the NFL, there's a tendency to be a copycat league. If somebody does something yep. well, everybody has that same thing within a week and a half. And this did, as Mike say, started with Miami this year. I mean, ultimately, we're going to go back to 1930s single wing football for everybody. And what it'll do is eliminate big salaries for quarterbacks. And what? most will we be happy. We don't want that to happen. <laughs> most, not you. <laughs> Third and three, you see all the Giants up front. They run with Lewis and his hurdle over the tackle of Kenny Phillips, the rookie. They have picked up the first down and did. Really nice call by Rob Trzynski, the offensive coordinator for the Browns. Spread the field out and run that quick trap to the inside. Kenny Phillips trying to make the tackle, but Jamal Lewis showing the athleticism, leaping over the tackle, getting the first down for the Browns. He hasn't hurdled anybody in five years. <laughs> he must be feeling frisky tonight. You could, like, slide a phone book under that yeah. leap right there. Wow. Lewis out. Jerome Harrison out of Washington State checks in. Number three. Ball start. Number 70 offense. Five yard penalty. First down. Ron, you were on Lewis early on uh, here this evening. He had to have a big game. No, no, no question, Mike. It's going to be about the power running game. There you see had not come around. Lee Jamal is up to the inside. Once again, look at the block by Vickers. He is just a beast as a blocking back. Here you see Hyden come around. I'm using a, a lot of different ways to get Jamal Lewis going north and south down the field. Anderson's throw, what a read off the corner by Corey Webster, who sniffed out that pass to Dante Stallworth. Incomplete. Let's see, do we have a marker down? Yes, we do. There is no foul for pass interference as the receiver was at the line of scrimmage. Therefore, by rule, no foul. Explained by John Parry, he'll bring us to second down. Yeah, once again, a play designed to get the football on the perimeter to Josh Cribbs. He's one of those guys you want to get the ball in space. A bubble screen trying to get the kick out block from Hyden just didn't work. The Giants defense was well prepared for that bubble screen. Jamal Lewis at the bottom of your screen as they go empty with two running backs in the game. And a quick throw this time hooked up with Stallworth. The 41 yard line, good pick up on second and long. It's a dozen. And again, a manageable third and three coming up for Derek Anderson and the Browns offense. Now, Mike, and I like the play selection right here. They're going to the quick passing game. You know, they're giving Derek Anderson definitive reads in this offense, spreading the field. He knows where to go with the football quickly. Three step drop, get the ball out of your hands. And right now, they're forcing the football into Josh Gibbs. And why not? He is an explosive football player. I'm sorry, that was Dante Stallworth on that play. Cindric Steptoe, another wide receiver, checks in on third and three. This time he'll close the third and three, and leaking out is the tight end, Hyden. Made a nice move, and Steve Hyden, starting for the injured Kellen Winslow, gets a nine-yard first down. 
you don't want to get carried away just very early in the game. But they, they don't look like a one in three team right now. They're moving the ball very well on the Giants. They had the opportunistic, when it looked like the Giants would score, they got the interception on Eli Manning, only the second one he's yielded all year and only the third one in his last eight games full, right? So the Browns, maybe it's the spotlight of a national game, but the Browns look a lot better than I think we thought they would look. So Derek Anderson doing a nice job. That was his fourth option on that play. He looked left, 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 and came back right. Offensive line gave him time to go through that protection. Fullback Vickers leading the way, and Lewis goes to the right. Runs over Chase Blackburn in there at linebacker for the Giants, and again to the 28-yard line. Mike, at one point, wasn't uh, Jamal Lewis Brandon Jacobs before Brandon Jacobs was Brandon That's a good Jacobs? Point. <laughs> yeah. Back that 2003 season went on. Yeah. Uh, at the very memorable Sunday night, he had the 295-yard game, part of that 2,000-yard season. So it's not like the Giants invented power run. I think this guy certainly in Baltimore had something to do with it. No, back in my days in Kansas City, uh, Marty Schottenhammer had a guy back there, Christian Okoye. Nigerian, Nigerian nightmare. nightmare. Yeah, there you go, Michael. Antonio Pierce not in the game for the Giants. Blackburn made that last tackle. Let's pick up, flag down as the pass is incomplete behind the tight end height. Illegal shift. Two men moving at the snap on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Second down. Four penalties, all procedure-type penalties. Illegal motion or false start. Exactly. Those are self-inflicted wounds. Quad injury for Antonio Pierce. His return is questionable. Pierce had a quad injury throughout the week. Did not practice on Thursday and Friday. Told us Saturday he was able to go, but uh, without Pierce, Blackburn walks into the lineup for the Giants. And that's a significant loss. Antonio Pierce really is the leader of that defense. Another second and long after a flag. And this pass is deflected and nearly intercepted. Jay Alford coming off the defensive line. Third round pick a couple of years ago out of Penn State. Makes it third and long. They point out here Dave Tollefson is scratched tonight for the Giants. Jerome McDougal is active for New York. Jaws, this, this sets up the similar situation earlier in the game where Anderson took a very short pass instead of making the pass you wanted him to make. So you look for that in this circumstance. Yes, I think. Is he going to be reluctant to go down the field? Well, he's getting a little rhythm in his game right now. He's completed a couple, couple balls. I think he feels more comfortable. If he gets a chance to make that stick throw, I think he'll see it. Field goal from here is about 51 yards into the slight wind that we have here tonight. Third down, Anderson down the seam behind Stallworth. An incomplete. Let's see if Cleveland, with, with a good leg kicker and Phil Dawson, goes for the field goal or not. Yes, they will. Decent breeze now coming in off the lake. Yeah, you want to be Derek Anderson here. Check Derek Anderson out, number three. Now he's looking down the field. He knows he's got that dig coming in from Stallworth. This is just an inaccurate throw. That ball has to be out in front. Now, Tony, I don't care if you're 5'11 or 6'3, that's an inaccurate throw. <laughs> okay. So we're not squeezing the strike zone on no, that. No, 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 I don't buy that. Okay. Estimate the wind about 8 to 10 miles an hour. Into it from 51. Dawson online. Long enough? No. Tail to it, hooked at the end, no good. Giants take over, trailing by three.
After a shift of power in the AFC, the Broncos will be looking to capitalize on a weakened Patriots team in New England. Denver Broncos versus the New England Patriots. Coverage starts with ESPN's Monday Night Countdown. This Monday, only on NASN. Take it to New England, where the Patriots are licking their wounds after another 20-plus point loss. Denver coming off its setback, still leading the West. You'll see the Broncos Patriots next Monday night from Foxborough, 8.30 Eastern on ESPN HD. And ESPN Deportes as well. Giants take over after the miss at the spot where the kick was attempted. Their own 42. Derek Ward's the running back, and Eli going to pump right, come left, complete, and held on to by the tight end, Kevin Boss, into Cleveland territory at the 35. First down, nice comeback after the pick. Yeah, and the pick really was Eli's fault. He had man-to-man -man coverage with a single high safety in Brodney Poole. Eli must keep Poole to the right side of the field, but he stares to the left. He knows he's got Plexico Burris coming in, and all Poole does is read Eli's eyes, takes him to the football. Look at Eli. He never came back to his right, looking left the entire time. Eye discipline was lacking on that particular play. Clock uh, expires here, and it brings quarter. the first quarter. Two and end to the Giants with their second turnover of the season. Browns one field goal made, one miss. Rio Cleveland after one. For many men. Sunday night football on NASN. First up, the Buffalo Bills are getting it done in the AFC East as they host the Chargers. Then in the NFC, Aaron Rodgers struggles to recapture early season form as the Packers welcome the Colts. And finally, the Seahawks travel to Tampa in fighting spirits after a slow start to their campaign. A live NFL triple header. Coverage starts with ESPN's NFL Countdown. This Sunday, only on NASN. Smile. That's all I do, though. Just play the game and go. I know you guys know that great things happen on days like this. Great things. I knew that was coming. Oh, sure. Come on, he's one of my idols. Yeah. It kind of looked like Greg Cosell, my producer at NFL Films, with NFL matchup. Of course, with Matthew, you ought to look like him. Incredible. Tony, impact. where were you on? Where were you on that first Monday night game? I was working. I just got gotten out of school. Working. I was working in Newsday. Mm -hmm. oh, I was working in Newsday, sports writer. Giants with 34 on first down to start this second quarter. Of course, Cleveland played the Jets. For that opening Monday nighter, Derek Ward left side into the secondary and a big pickup on first down inside the 20, a gain of 17. This is the nice changeup. You know, you get the thunder of Brandon Jacobs, then you get the lightning of Derek Ward. Here's the stretch play to the outside, an excellent block. Oof. Coming around the horn, Chris Snee, David Deal, terrific job up front, and more explosive is Derek Ward than Brandon Jacobs. Jake is very powerful, but you can see Ward just blistering through the hole. David Deal, what a block. He yeah, kicked that block all the around. way. So he got to the pancake at the end. Ward stays in. Take it to the left. Good opportunity for the tackle by Mike Adams. 
We'll have second down. The Giants running the ball effectively. You think so? Leading the National Football League, coming in almost six yards a carry and 10 rush plays of 20 yards or more, leading the league. Sort of like a college setup, isn't it? That they put Jacobs in for the first quarter, then they put Ward in, they eventually put Bradshaw, and then you want to keep the carries relatively similar and make everybody happy. Gives them the versatility depending on the defense they play, yeah. what the play call is. They call the group Earth, Wind, and Fire. Obviously, Jacobs is the Earth. You bet. He's the Earth mover. Here's Ward. He'll take it to the 11-yard line before Sean Rogers and Dequell Jackson, who has several tackles already, make the stop. What I meant by that was it's like they, they were stacking up all the scholarships in college, and they want to make sure nobody transfers, so they get <laughs> each of these three guys into the game enough, so they have to earn a letter, and they would, would cost them a year if they transferred. They keep them happy that way. Coughlin was always by nature a one running back guy. Tiki Barber emerges the third down back, and then he was the only back for Tom for the majority of his Giants head coaching days. Third and four. First down away to the seven. Yeah, Steve Smith is a guy that Eli likes in these situations as third and five or less. Pressure comes from Cleveland. And, and Manny throws to Smith complete for the first down at the seven. Ball came out, but after he was down, tackled by Adams and McDonald, but a first and goal for Big Lou. And Steve Smith right there at the bottom of the screen is a very precise route runner. Eli Manning knows where he is going to be. You see him come underneath on that smash route about five yards. Just knowing you want to get enough for a first down. It's man-to-man -man coverage. Smith does a great job of covering the football after the catch. But Eli trusts him. That's what's important for a quarterback wide receiver relationship. Giants go a couple of tight ends and Jacobs is the lone back. It's in the receiver's right. Jacobs comes left, accelerates into the end zone. Touchdown, New York. He's really tiptoeing now. They hit him hard and he just stopped running, huh? I guess not. I guess not. You know, he, he saw Derek Ward have a nice run. He's on the sideline resting. He goes, I'm going to be back out there real fresh. And my goodness, he came rolling downhill. You'll see it right here, the toss of Jacobs. And I mean, once he gets that pad level down, he is destroying people. The feet moving all the time. The leverage delivers the blow. Same foot, same shoulders. My friend Merrill Hodge says the factor back. And wow, he just takes the pile into the end zone. Mike Adams peeled his number 20 off the turf of Cleveland Brown Stadium. Jacobs ran him over. John Carney is kicking adds the extra point. Here's the real problem with Jacobs. Once he gets past the line, everybody's 100 pounds lighter than him, and you do not want to get in his way. Sirs, your comments on global warming. Sunday NFL Countdown, only on NASN. Looking right, looking left. Let's it go, downfield. Throw it into the end zone. He fires. Touchdown, touchdown, Nebraska. He has an opening. And he sees that end zone. Keep it going. He's across the goal line. Gans has done it again, his second rushing touchdown. He has been such a money ball player. Mike just watched the way he danced past those two blockers. Slam dunk. ESPN 360. Wherever and whenever you're online, you're at the game. The NHL is back, and NASN has you covered. He scores! Don't miss the big hits. Whoa! The league's brightest stars. Oh, trying to walk in, but he scores! And all the fantastic finishes. Watch over 200 live games this season, including the All-Star Game, the playoffs, and the 2009 Stanley Cup Finals. Stanley Cup. Live from the U.S. and Canada, we take you right into the action. NASN, your home for the NHL. Ohio's second largest city, Cleveland. 
Giants leading the Browns seven to three. Columbus is the largest. I knew that. I knew that the capitalists were wonderful. Uh, Jacobs, remember that comment we mentioned very early, Tony, about the uh, words going back and forth between the two sides of Jacobs tiptoeing into the end zone. And after you hit him, he'll start tiptoeing, be a little bit sure. softer. Let me show you what happened after that touchdown a moment ago. Short kickoffs from Carney have been a problem into the wind. A pretty good kickoff here brings Cribs back to the three. Joshua Cribs brought down to the 26 yard line. Brian Keel and Kenny Phillips lead the tackle. So that tiptoeing, watch him after the touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> I got you tiptoeing right here. I'm doing it in the end zone. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Interruption, but I'm Mike Wilbon. Tony, we talk American sports. So how do you think our show translates in Europe? I'm Tony Kornheiser, probably pretty poorly, especially like in Romania. ESPN's Pardon the Interruption. Join Tony and Mike for all the latest opinions and headlines weeknights only on NASN. Bad for the Browns offense so far. A couple of drives starting deep in their own territory. They have 122 yards. They've moved it well into scoring position. The problem, three points out of it. And lack of discipline. The penalties have hurt them. Fourth year out of Oregon State, Derek Anderson waved by Baltimore in 05. At the wheel of the offense and loading up a deep ball. Braylon Edwards got a step. Braylon Edwards got the ball. Braylon Edwards to the five. First and goal. 69 yards. Aaron Ross fell down. A beautiful designed play. Normally when the quarterback boots out to his right, you'll see the deep comeback from the wide receiver. They ran a little stutter comeback, and he took it deep down the field. Aaron Ross stumbled, and Braden Edwards got behind him. You'll see right there, the little stutter on the out move, and then he takes off, and Ross bit the out move. And a great throw from Anderson to Braylon Edwards. That's what Savage was talking about when he said he was a gunslinger and a mad bomber. Well, That's gotta... the longest pass play they've had all year, and we've said that twice now. Well, the Browns couldn't get themselves organized after the big play. Forced to take a timeout. Officially 70 yards. First and goal, Cleveland. I spun around, went to throw him, but I slipped, so he was free, and then he started falling. Luis Castillo shot out of the canyon. Hey, Dante, man, hell of a fight, man. Hell of a fight, man. Hell of a fight, man. Stay healthy, man. You too. In this league, if there's a hole, no matter how small, you got to be able to get through it. Check this out. Oh! 
Yeah! In your league, you better pick me. Your move. Monday Night Football on NASN. After a shift to power in the AFC, the Broncos will be looking to capitalize on a weakened Patriots team in New England. Denver Broncos versus the New England Patriots. Coverage starts with ESPN's Monday Night Countdown. This Monday, only on NASN. Just at a 70-yard completion to Braylon Edwards. He had 95 yards receiving in the first four games. Against Cleveland, a first and goal at the four, trying to take the lead on the undefeated Super Bowl champion Giants. Derek Anderson to Cedric Steptoe. Pass interference is called. Now, the official made the sign that there was a deflected ball. Deflected ball can oftentimes erase a pass interference call and it probably will here there is no foul for pass interference as the ball is tipped at the line of scrimmage here's a look so you'll see the umpire right away signaling that the ball was deflected well, you are a hawkeye Mike <laughs> He's being helped by that hunter's moon. 98%. <laughs> They've run the ball well. They look to throw it on first and goal. Jamal Lewis back in on second and goal. And Charles Ali is the fullback. And Lewis scores. Tucker making his away debut, the right tackle through a nice block, and the Browns take the lead. Yeah, really nice job by Jamal Lewis. Great vision on this play. It was designed to go to the left behind Joe Thomas. Good job by the Giant defense, but Jamal Lewis finds the cutback and gets it in the end zone. Phil Dawson's extra point, the period on Jamal Lewis's 60th career National Football League touchdown. Only their fifth touchdown all year for the Cleveland Browns, but look who's winning the game. Is it the undefeated Giants? No, not at the moment. Sounds surprised. ESPN 360. Whenever you're online, you're at the game. Giants that pass to Braylon Edwards the 70-yarder that set up the Jamal Lewis score 
first time that a pass to a target 20 yards downfield, essentially a deep ball, has been hit by the Browns this year. They were the only team not to hit one of those. 0 for 9 until that big one. The wind at the back of Dawson. Ahmad Bradshaw brings it out and has some room as he gets to the 30 yard line where Travis Daniels tackles him. Ron, take us back to the touchdown. Yeah, and of course, it was a beautifully designed play by Rob Chutzinski. It's a run formation where you can get Aaron Ross matched man to man on Braylon Edwards. You come off the play action fake, and this is kind of an out and up. Now, you always know a corner that is going to jump that out, and apparently, the Browns thought that Aaron Ross was that guy. And watch the stick move to the outside right there. Aaron Ross jumps it. Brayden Edwards does a good job avoiding the contact and taking it straight up the field. But Aaron did show the closing speed of his fiance. <laughs> Sonia Richards, who's on the U.S. Olympic team, won a gold medal in the relay. Won a bronze in an individual race in Beijing a few months ago. Eli back to work. That pass deflected off the corner by Eric Wright. Incomplete. Let's go back to Braylon Edwards for a second. He had a great year last year 1,289 yards, 16 touchdowns. He dropped passes early this year. He's had no year so far, and there are anxieties that come with a one and three team. And Edwards told us the other day that he and others on this team have been trying to do too much. And he said, We got to stop caring about what other people are saying about us. We've got to just go out and play football. He's going to lead by example if that was any indication. And Tim play clock in trouble. Timeout, New York. Getting into it in Cleveland, starting to believe in their one and three Browns on Monday Night Football. In 2007, rookie wideout Calvin Johnson helped the Detroit Lions win five of their first seven games. Welcome to the NFL, rookie. That is one great catch. At six foot four, Johnson is a big and rugged target for the Lions. Calvin Johnson dives in for a Lion touchdown. But don't let his size fool you. Averaging almost 16 yards per catch in 2007, Johnson has the speed to pose a deep threat too. than that, can you? Sunday Night Football on NASN. First up, the Buffalo Bills are getting it done in the AFC East as they host the Chargers. Then in the NFC, Aaron Rodgers struggles to recapture early season form as the Packers welcome the Colts. And finally, the Seahawks travel to Tampa in fighting spirits after a slow start to their campaign. A live NFL triple header. Coverage starts with ESPN's NFL Countdown. This Sunday, only on NASN. With a Sports Center right now, and wow, the Tampa Bay Rays not only beat the Red Sox 9-1 to take a 2-1 series lead, they hammered John Lester for five runs, eight hits. And five and two-thirds, B.J. Upton and Evan Longoria going big fly. And Tony Romo could be out for four weeks. Broken pinky on his throwing in. Brad Johnson, the 40-year-old, will take over. Sports Center after the game, Michael Cleveland, back to you. Thank you, Lee. Very busy sports day. Talk more about that as we go on here. Out of the Giants, call timeout. Second and ten. And Brandon Jacobs, Sean Rogers. Pushing the pile over his way, a gain of four as Corey Williams finished with the tackle. Mike, you mentioned name Sean Rogers, and he is one of the best nose guards in the National Football League. Uh, he's listed at about uh, 350 pounds. I think he's closer to 400. <laughs> I mean, he just engulfs people in the middle of that line. You'll see him right there with a stunt to the inside. Rich Seibert has his hands full on Sean Rogers, and Rogers makes the play. He comes out. Browns go six defensive backs, 36. Banks with four wide. It's Nick Sorensen, 27, showing blitz, bringing blitz. Manning's throw complete to Plexico Burris with space. His first catch 
of the night. First catch back from suspension. Rogers knocked down Eli on that play. There's a penalty marker downfield. The gain was 32. And let's see what the flag is. A nice job by the Giants offensive line and backs picking up the blitz Mike you called it correctly Sorensen came off the corner on his blitz they played man free behind it but if you give NFL wide receivers time to work down the block field, in the back number 87 offense 10 yard penalty first down it's Dominic Hickson it's from the spot where it happens so the Giants will yeah, but a good job. Down. Yeah, good job working downfield you'll see Eli in the pocket here the blitz is picked up. You see Sorensen on the left side of the screen picked up, and Eli has time. Oh, oh and that's a big body falling on top of you. I, and you'll see Plax coming in here, working this very nicely on Terry Cousins. Sticks to the outside, comes back to the inside. Just too much time to work the route. And here comes the penalty. Dixon right there, a little push in the back. A little push. A little push. Very little. On Eric Wright, Giants have the ball near midfield. The net gain on that one was 15, and it's Derek Ward taking it into Brown's territory. Both teams moving it pretty well. Giants are averaging eight yards per play. Cleveland, nine yards per play. I, I don't want to make a, a Terrell Owens analogy too tightly here because we know of him as being a controversial player. But do you think, Jaws, that Eli Manning is looking to try and get the ball to Plexico Burris early and often because he was off the team suspended for one game? You know, I, I don't think so. I, I think this offense is so far along right now that Eli is going to read the coverage and, and go where the defense tells him to, to go with the football. With Ward next to Manning, the second and six. Eli to Burris. Off, flag down back at the quarterback. Sean Rogers again pressuring and knocking Manning down. Hold on the Giants. Rogers doing a great job pass holding tonight. Number 69 offense, 10 yard penalty, second down. Well, Rich Seibert has his hands full with Sean Rogers. Sean O'Hara trying to help on the double team. He splits the double team, and boy, that's one of those very dangerous plays going low on the quarterback. But boy, he just splits the double team, and that's one big fella. You need two on him, and two doesn't even get the job done. What did Tom Coughlin tell us last night? Sean Rogers is a large refrigerator with a motor. We saw the motor there. In the home of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, get your motor running, fits that guy tonight. Steppenwolf reference, we love it. Second and 16, Manning, deep ball, burst. Good ball recognition by Brandon McDonald. He's 5'10", giving up about a half foot plus to Plex, but covered it well, third down. I don't want to say I told you so, Jaws, but it seems like every time Eli's throwing the ball lately, he's throwing at Plexico Burris. Well, you had single on the outside, and that's where the defense tells you to throw the football. You get a matchup size-wise with Brandon McDonald at 5'10 against a 6'5 Plexico Burris, but McDonald did a terrific job. Great ball skills. He's got his eye on the football, goes up at its highest point, and tips the ball away. In fact, almost had the interception. Giants need to take it. To the Browns 41 for a first down. Browns showing that odd defense, the UFO defense. It's complete to Derek Ward, who is tackled back at the line of scrimmage by Terry Cousin. UFO meaning unidentified, flying against the offense. Yes, and it was funny because one of those UFOs was Sean Rogers playing a linebacker, and once the ball was snapped, he just came fine. There it is. You'll see it right now. This is their UFO defense. You can't identify anyone. And look at big number 92 coming inside. That is a UFO, but we all know he's identified. Let right me just now. say, you can identify him because he weighs 400 pounds. He's the only one out there weighing that much. Nobody has more punts, punt yards in the NFL's history than Jeff Fiegel's. A penalty will kill this snap for, I believe, a false start. Ball start. Number 22 offense. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. And Mike, well, we spent some time with Mel Tucker, the defensive coordinator for the Cleveland Browns, and we we're out of practice on Saturday. And you know, he's a very innovative guy, and you know, you could see different things out of practice. And one of those things we picked up being there was that UFO defense. And uh, he wasn't sure if he was going to use it tonight. They've been working on it, but hey, we saw it, and it worked effectively for the Browns. Fiegel's back to punt again. 
pinning Cribs to the sideline, and the Browns will take over at their own 22. Well, that Dallas Arizona games are checking out Eli Manning after he had Sean Rogers fallen a couple of times. Tony Romo got checked out after breaking his pinky in this uh, Cowboys Cardinals game. Arizona all over Romo. That's the first play of overtime where the injury occurs. Be out four weeks. One of them a bye. And of course, the game ending with Sean Morey blocking the punt. And the Cardinals had a return on. Scooped and scored for the touchdown by Monty Beisel. First time a game's ended in overtime on a blocked punt. And the punter, McBriar, broke his foot on that. He's out six to eight weeks. But how the landscape of the NFC East changed with the performance in the desert yesterday. And include the Arizona Cardinals in that mix right now at four and two. The run on first. For Lawrence Vickers, the fullback, gains a couple of yards. First time a block punt for a touchdown into the game in overtime. The next four games now for the Cowboys at 4 and 2. San Francisco at, for the uh, Giants, I should say. San Francisco at Pittsburgh, Dallas, and Philadelphia. The Cowboys' schedule is what people have an eye on. They're 4 and 2 with St. Louis a visit, Tampa at home, and then their visit to the Meadowlands coming up on November 2nd. It's a really significant injury, I think, to, to Romo. I mean, the Giants can look at this as a way to get some real space between them and the Cowboys, and the Redskins lost as well yesterday. I mean, Romo makes things happen for them. Sometimes bad, sometimes good, but he keeps you in the game all the time. But I believe you'll see some good things out of Brad Johnson. The ball will come out quicker. Ball start. Number 70 offense. Five-yard penalty. Second down. We're almost kind of an extend the play you know, quarterback. He gets back there, doesn't have to get the ball out on time, likes to move around, extend the play. Brad Johnson will come in. He doesn't have that gunslinger type arm to throw it down the Just field. He's 40. I, well, that's he's, why he doesn't have the arm. But that's he's why he said, hey, he's a Super Bowl quarterback. He can't make the throws that the Super Bowl well, that's quarterback. That's what I just said. Ago. You're going to see years, it. You're going to see, see, you're gonna see a different offense. You'll see a, you know, a, a more of a balanced attack. You'll see the running game. Why not? They've got a great running back. They got a huge offense. <laughs> you're trying to line. paint this as a good thing for <laughs> Dallas. <laughs> well, I'm not. Because I'm saying, hey, don't need to panic. You got Brad Johnson. Another timeout taken here by the Browns after their fifth false start penalty. I, I do know this. If T.O. didn't have Brad Johnson's cell phone, it got moved up in the speed <laughs> dial. You know he's going to be calling a little bit more. But do you think that the Cowboys will be defended differently by teams because of Brad Johnson? Oh, oh, oh absolutely. I mean, the, the vertical pass game, Tony, you're right. He's 40 years old. He's not going to go down the field, you know, 40 and 50 yards. But Brad understands the unique timing and rhythm of the passing game. He'll read coverage. The ball will come out quicker. The receivers will get the ball more in stride where they can get more yards after the catch than having to throw the ball vertically down the field. And the larger perspective, you talk about Washington, Tony, and the NFC. Now, the Giants uh, could be up uh, two plus games if they can get the win here tonight. Redskins and Cowboys at 4 2. A good win for the Eagles out in San Francisco as they rallied after letting that one slip away in the second and third quarter to beat the 49ers. Second and long here is Hyden, who's in for Kellen Winslow tonight, and the tight end takes it to the 28 yard line. I just can't let this go completely. I know that the Joss thinks this is good. For Dallas, I didn't but say it you was and I good. both know that the words in my mouth. You and I both know, Mike, that T.O. will be having many conversations <laughs> with Brad Johnson. Brad Johnson will have to say, "Stop calling me." You know, come on. It'd be interesting to see how, but it's so interesting how fortunes change quickly in the NFL. Dallas looked unbeatable for a few weeks there. Looked so good. After Washington so New solid England. loses to St. Louis. Jason writes the back, third and five. Edwards in traffic, caught it first down, and Braylon Edwards is having a heck of a first half. He's had a better first half than he's had first quarter of the season. And you could sense Derek Anderson starting to feel it. Good quick drop, good quick read, the ball coming out of his hand quickly, and most importantly, accurately puts the ball right on the pads, right at the eyes, as Drew Brees likes to say, where you can get where your receiver can catch the football. You see this Browns offense getting a little balance, a little rhythm. They're starting to feel it right now. Edwards 129 yards. Anderson 169 throwing. And Jamal Lewis attacks Antonio Pierce with a tackle for a gain of four. Pierce was out in the first quarter with his quad injury, but has come back in here in the second quarter. It's worth saying how bad the Cleveland Browns offense has been this year. Derek Anderson under 50% completions. Braylon Edwards 16 touchdowns last year. One this year. Kellen Enns, Wilkinslow hurt now, but having a subpar year. Joshua Cribbs a subpar year. Even Jamal Lewis a subpar year. Everything that could happen bad to the Browns on offense has happened so far. 
James Butler out. Kenny Phillips in. Safety for the Giants. Anderson to Hyden the tight end. Complete to Steve Hyden at the 45. First down pickup of 14. So look how much better all of them look together tonight. And obviously that starts at quarterback. No, no, no question. It, it all starts at the quarterback. It starts with having the balance on the offense. They got the running game going. They got a couple deep balls. They softened up the defense, the Giants. Good throw right here to Hyden. Put it right in the belt buckle with Webster closing so he can make the catch. People are saying, Cullen who? Oh, no, they're not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Lewis, only a gain of a yard for Jamal. It's been a good night for Derek Anderson, making his 23rd start in the NFL. 11 and 11 is record. Yeah, and he's been very sharp today. I love this throw right here. He's on his toes, sticking the ball in there to Braylon Edwards. This throw right here is the long ball. He gets it out in front, and you get the big play in the passing game to Braylon Edwards. Love the rollout action. Move away from the pass rush of the Giants, which is outstanding. I think Rob Chodzinski right now, the offense quitter, really has a good feel for what the Giants are doing. Flash formation, quarterback Joshua Cribbs. Anderson's out far to the bottom of the screen. Cribbs gives it to Jamal Lewis, and very careful <laughs> they had to be on reading the end. That whole read play, you're reading the defensive end to see what's going on. A decision's made at the very last second. Does it go in the belly of the running back, or does the quarterback pull it out and keep it? In the old option football, Josh, they call it the mesh point. And that's right. And I'll tell you what, Cribs on that play, I thought he was going to keep it. <laughs> but I think Jamal wanted to take it, <laughs> and there was almost a fumble. Injury timeout for the Giants. They've already seen Pierce go out for a stretch. James Butler go out for a bit. And now uh, Jarris Wilkinson, linebacker, shaking up for the Giants. Football on NASN. After a shift of power in the AFC, the Broncos will be looking to capitalize on a weakened Patriots team in New England. Denver Broncos versus the New England Patriots. Coverage starts with ESPN's Monday Night Countdown. This Monday, only on NASN. I'll trade you a Red Sox home jersey and a Rangers t-shirt for that Pirates jack. No way! I want that Cardinals hoodie and that Braves away uniform and an item to be named later. You drive a hard bargain. Majestic Athletic, the official uniform supplier for all 30 Major League Baseball teams. Available now all over Europe at NASN.com. Tampa Bay Rays are headed to the American League Championship Series. That one's gonna go. Manny won. Red Sox win. The Major League Baseball World Series, only on NASN. Cleveland trying to get its season kick started. As Hank Williams Jr. would say, 10-7 <laughs> Browns here on Monday Night Football. Mike Tirico, Tony Kornheiser, Ron Jaworski, Michelle Tafoya on the field. Jarris Wilkinson able to come off, assisted by the trainers. Browns have been very good on third down tonight. This is a little longer than they've had. Third and seven. That's where the Giants like to bring pressure. Become a half dozen Giants. Anderson's throw complete for the first down to Cindric Steptoe. Eighth pitch for last year's seventh round pick out of Arizona. The big difference tonight in Derek Anderson from what I've seen over the last four games is the ability to hang in the pocket and wait till the last second. Stay on that back foot and deliver the football with accuracy. He's looking down the gun barrel, not worried about the rush. That's what a quarterback has to do. Wait till the last second and delivers a strike to Steptoe. 20 yards for Steptoe who after the first week of the preseason didn't look like he was going to make this team. Injuries, other things made Steptoe a starter at one point this year. First down, Anderson wants it. It's a touchdown! Darnell Dinkins! Jr. the 
tight end spent three nights in the hospital with an illness that he does not want disclosed. He's out of the hospital, tried his best to get the doctors to let him play tonight. He doesn't. Without him, Steve Hyden, the tight end, three catches, a couple for first down. And Darnell Dickens catches a touchdown. And the Browns shocking the Super Bowl champion Giants lead by 10. You know, early in the game, I said that Derek Anderson wasn't seeing the field clearly, afraid to make the stick throw. Well, he is getting it back right now. This is not an easy throw. You've got to be confident in making this throw over Antonio Pierce. Look at this throw. Absolutely perfect. Dinkins makes the catch for the touchdown. That is trusting your receiver. I love him driving off the back foot, following through, oblivious to the rush, reading coverage. You know we had Dinkins on a linebacker down the middle open of the field. Great throw, great read by Dinkins, and you can see the Browns bench very excited about the way the Browns are playing right now. And Giants fans got to be going, is that the same Darnell Dinkins that played for us in 02 and 03? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Let me get to uh, Derek Anderson, who you see on the screen there. He's got a really big arm, and that's why Phil Savage and Romeo Cornell love him. He hasn't shown that big arm at all so far this year. But last year, he had 29 touchdown passes. And he helped get contract extensions for the GM and for the coach. And they have stayed with him. Because there's a drumbeat in this city for Brady Quinn. Because Brady Quinn is a local. And people are waiting. When are we going to see? When are we going to see Brady? And it came close last week in Cincinnati. But Cornell stayed with Anderson. And he has been rewarded tonight with Anderson. He kicked off by Dawson. When David touched back. Giants take over at the 20. Yeah, you bring up Brady Quinn. And... You know, often the number two quarterback on a team, the backup, obviously the most popular guy because everyone's seeing Chase. Well, this guy's maybe the face of the franchise. He might be the most recognizable Brown. I'll tell you this. He's the only guy when you watch games on Sunday who's a backup quarterback who has his own commercials going on, you know? <laughs> but Anderson yeah. with a little bit of pressure coming up big time tonight. But there's always that notion in the back of Anderson's mind that I got to put it out on the line tonight because you don't know if you're going to get another chance because Brady Quinn is so popular. Tonight, he's keeping this job. And you know what? You can't worry about that if you're the quarterback. You've got so many other things to worry about. You can't be looking over your shoulder. D.A. tonight has forgotten about all the distractions. Focusing on the game, and he has loosened up very nicely. From the 20, Manning's throw is complete to Steve Smith. It's a gain of 13. Remember, they were working on Manning's shoulder when they came off the field earlier. He got a couple of Sean Rogers' body falling on him. And they've been getting hits on Eli tonight. It's got to be the biggest lead Cleveland has had all year, and they're having it against an undefeated team. Monday Night Football on NASN. After a shift of power in the AFC, the Broncos will be looking to capitalize on a weakened Patriots team in New England. Denver Broncos versus the New England Patriots. Coverage starts with ESPN's Monday Night Countdown. This Monday, only on NASN. Shots with Sean Rogers on the last drive, including one that ended up on his other shoulder, the, the non throwing shoulder. And this was right after the Giants came off the field. They were looking at that left shoulder for Eli Manning. It wasn't the whole length of the Browns' drive. 
He just completed one to Steve Smith to get this two minute drive going. The Giants have two timeouts remaining. All replay challenges are not. It happens from upstairs now. Nicole Jackson tackles Derek Ward at the 35, second down. Eli knows he has two timeouts left, so he can be patient. Burris and Tumor at the top. Dominic Hickson at the bottom. Time for Manning. A flag comes in and Smith gets it at the 44-yard line. Rodney Poole tackle. Let's check the flag. Prior to the pass, holding number 55 defense. That penalty is declined. Result of the play, first and ten, New York. Willie McGinnis, three times Super Bowl. Well, the Giants facing their largest deficit since McGinnis' old team, the New England Patriots, played the Giants in that wild regular season finale on the Saturday night last year that set the table for the Giants to believe in themselves. They went on to win all four playoff games away from the medal line. Blitz off the corner. Manning saw it. Threw it to where the blitz came from. Steve Smith again. First down at the 35. Just outstanding awareness by Eli Manning. Saw the corner blitz coming. He knew he had Steve Smith down the field. And where he placed the football on the outside shoulder where only Steve Smith could make the catch. One timeout left for the Giants. You'll see here to the right of Eli Manning comes the pressure. He moves from the pressure. Accurate throw down the field to Steve Smith. Smith with catches of 13, 8, and 21 here on this drive. And let us remind you that the Toyota halftime shows moments away with Chris Berman and Tom Jackson. Prime time at halftime, as Boomer likes to say, the fastest three minutes. The Romo Impact read and react and highlights of the Tampa Bay Rays. Two wins for the World Series. Beating Boston earlier today. Four receivers in the back. Derek Ward, first and ten. Manning throws again. Steve Smith, who's killing the Browns in this drive. Gain of 14, first down. Yeah, he's getting the matchup of Steve Smith on Rodney Poole, a safety, and that's a matchup that certainly favors Steve Smith. And they go man coverage, Eli reaching quickly, Steve Smith winning quickly. Smith, 13 catches on the year, five tonight, four on this drive. Manning incomplete, and Eric Wright able to break it up. He was hoping for the pick, the second year man out of UNLV. Well, I believe that's one throw Eli would like to have back. That one should have had a little air under it. Down the field, I believe he would have had the touchdown. You'll see it here. Throw back to the inside. A little air to the outside. Could have been a touchdown. But you got to give some props to Eric Wright. He made a heck of a play. Trying to get it to Dominic Hickson, who was uh, very good last week against Seattle. Four catches, 102 yards. Kicks him with his speed at the top of the screen. Brown show six, bring them all. Manning to Hickson, too tall. Third down coming up, 54 seconds left. I like the change up. They brought a little pressure right there. They weren't going to let Eli sit back in the pocket and let him read the defense. They made, they kind of forced the issue right there, made him get rid of the football quickly. Kevin Gilbride, the offensive coordinator, has got to dial one up here. Don't let that guy dial no, one no. up. Boy. <laughs> that wasn't Kevin Gilbride. <laughs> Burris will now be the lone receiver with the three close to him. Manning chased down, lost the football. Recovered by Dequel Jackson of the Browns, Corey Williams. Knocked it away, a marker down in the secondary. Looks like it's against the Brown. Prior to the pass, illegal contact, number 20 defense. The ball will go back to New York. Five-yard penalty, automatic, first and ten. The most penalized bunch in the league has uh, been foul again here tonight, Mike Adams. On the flat. And 
And the key point made that it happened before the fumble, the contact. And once that ball is out, just uh, going for it. Brings it an automatic first down for the Giants at the 16 yard line. One timeout, 47 seconds left. Yeah, and you'll see right here, you're going to try to get this route down the field in, down the middle of the field with the field open as we roll it here. You'll see the stutter go now to the inside of that right there, and there's the contact more than five yards down the field. Good call. There was contact. Yes, it's a good call, but it's incredibly now, unfortunate for the Giants. Well, you got to call what, what happens. We have the uh, play stopped here as John Parry and uh, company will go over for a replay review. Again, the last two minutes initiated from upstairs. Tom Coughlin there wondering exactly what being what is being reviewed here. So while they check it out, we'll step out for a second. Giants driving down 10. Pardon the interruption, but I'm Mike Wilbon. Tony, we talk American sports. So how do you think our show translates in Europe? I'm Tony Kornheiser, probably pretty poorly, especially like in Romania. ESPN's Pardon the Interruption. Join Tony and Mike for all the latest opinions and headlines weeknights only on NASN. Sunday Night Football on NASN. First up, the Buffalo Bills are getting it done in the AFC East as they host the Chargers. Then in the NFC, Aaron Rodgers struggles to recapture early season form as the Packers welcome the Colts. And finally, the Seahawks travel to Tampa in fighting spirits after a slow start to their campaign. A live NFL triple header. Coverage starts with ESPN's NFL Countdown. This Sunday, only on NASN. What we believe is being looked at here in replay, was it an incomplete pass or a fumble? If it was an incomplete pass, the Giants' yardage situation would change. And here's John Perry. After reviewing the play, the play stands as called. It was a fumble. There was illegal contact. Five yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down, New York. And the illegal contact part of that was not part of the review. Here is what they looked at, and pretty easy to tell. As Corey Williams got in there, it's a great shot. Look at his face. Look yeah. at Eli's face it's grimacing like that. It's bad. You'll see right here Eli looking down the field, looking for that little move right there by Steve Smith. You see the contact as Eli's getting ready to throw the football. Clearly beyond five yards, clearly contact. The right call. The Giants and Browns totaling 469 yards in this first half. Bunch formation with the Giants, the bottom of your screen. Burris, Toomer, and Smith, and they'll run it with Ward, who gets to the eight-yard line. Good call down here. Giants have a timeout, but don't need to use it inside of 40 seconds. Yeah, save that timeout. You can still be patient with the line of scrimmage. Get a line. No need to panic. Throws the slant, completes a Hickson. It's a first down. May want to take the time out here. They will. I would definitely use yeah. it here. Yeah. 17 seconds left. Giants use their final timeout. The left first and goal at the three with no timeouts. Oh, those of you just tuning in, surprised to see the undefeated Giants down 10. Here's what's happened. Eli Manning been hit a few times, thrown his second interception of the year, but 11 of 17. Brandon Jacobs, the story early on for the Giants. Five carries, 29 yards, his fourth touchdown of the year. For Cleveland, it's been Braylon Edwards. This deep ball on Aaron Ross. The longest pass play by a lot for the Browns, and it's been a much better night for Derek Anderson. The only guy who started every game this year and been under 50% completions has been sharp, sharper as the game's gotten deeper. Nobody picked up Derek Anderson all year like that so far. That's a new move for the Browns, given how bad their offense had been. Now, the Giants still have the run option available. Even though they have no timeouts, there are 17 seconds left in the clock. If they ran and didn't score, they could still really? spike the football. Yes. Giants identifying what the Browns are doing defensively. Hickson in motion, and Manning throws for Burris. Got it. Touchdown, 
Giants. Oh, Plexico Burst suspended for the game last week. Gets the TD. And the Giants. Again, Mike, it's all about matchups. Watch Eli. He knows he's got Plexico Burst at six foot five on Terry Cousins at five foot nine. That's a matchup that clearly favors Plexico Burst. You'll see the stick to the inside to create some separation. Look at the huge size advantage right there. Cousins has no chance. The 31st time that Manning to Burris rings up six for the Giants. Carney adds the extra point. Three point game, a dozen seconds till halftime. What a gift that Cleveland just gave the Giants with that penalty. Because they're going to lose the ball. They're going to go into halftime no worse than 17 7. Now it's 17 14. And Plexico Burris, who Monty Tumor told us yesterday, thought he would have a very big game. Eli Manning obviously looking for him, and that's a route that he wants all the time because, as you say, Jaws, he's about three feet taller yeah. than who's ever covering him. But it's a good way for Burris to start to say, okay, I'm back. You know, I, I want to be part of the team again. Give me a break. Throw me the ball, and they did. You know, we, we, we saw Kevin Gilbride, the offensive coordinator, talking to Eli Manning a moment ago as we look at Plexico Burris right now. And this just, again, coaches put players in position to make plays. This is a beautiful, beautiful job of designing a play where you're going to get Plexico Burris at six foot five, matched against a nickel corner in Terry Cousin at five foot nine. Your best player on pretty much a backup corner. That's outstanding coaching, setting your player up for success. We mentioned Manning to burst 31 times, guys. That extends their Giants record. It was Kerry Collins, quarterback of the other undefeated team in the NFL. That's the Tennessee Titans. And Amani Tumor, 28 times. For people my age, that's so hard to believe that it wasn't Connerly or Rode or Gifford okay. or people like that, that it's only 31 touchdown passes and it's these two. Even though the longevity of those guys, the change of the way the game is played, and the passing game is so much more prevalent now. I'm giving away my age. 39 almost <laughs> Jack Benny <laughs> Cleveland gets on it Darnell Dinkins with it out to the 40 yard line Browns have more yards tonight than they have in any game but that Manning to Burris connection 21 percent of Eli's completions have gone to Plex he's been the most popular choice for Eli over the years and now 36 percent of Eli's career touchdown passes have gone to Burris. That's uh, the man who caught the game winning touchdown with 35 seconds left in Super Bowl 42. Imagine if he was on time to the meetings all the time, he could have 100 touchdowns. <laughs> I like those little pie charts that we use now. I can understand that thing. Interesting that they squip the interesting they squip the ball there. The ball goes to the 40 yard line. Cleveland has eight seconds left and a timeout. Anderson will restore it short and the pass is incomplete to Hyde. We're now down to five seconds left. Oh, I, I, know what you're thinking, Mike. I knew you were thinking. Yeah. Matt Ryan makes a great throw with about eight seconds to go. Uh, he went to the deeper route. Derek Anderson there went to the short route to set up the 80 yard field goal. <laughs> Which, <laughs> we got to go deeper down. The field. We, we know Dawson has a strong leg, but uh, <laughs> that's it's strong. a little bit out of his range. Yeah. And it, he does have some wind in his back. In the preseason, we saw him kick a 56 yard field goal at Giant Stadium, remember, Dawson. So it would have been. <laughs> an Mike's trying to sell this. No, no, no. If they would have gotten 25 yards oh, okay. on that play, they would have had a chance. Now it's just. I don't know what it is. Like, they went from 40 I mean, yards. I mean, really, at that point, what are you doing? <laughs> this, this. Well, now, they, now they've left themselves uh, well, one second to throw the Hail Mary. Of course, that's what they were trying to do, right? I mean, what's a four-yard pass going to get you in this situation? I mean, the Browns have had problems in their two-minute drills pretty much all season long, and this is this is not a surprise that they're botching this one once again. Now they'll take a knee. So this whole yeah. good first half they had, they give everybody a reason to boo on the way out here. They shouldn't boo though. I guess the best they've played all year. Not, not that that's a bad decision there. Right. It's just the first two on the front end of it. Now they cheer. Their Browns well, had a good half. Yeah. They yeah. played their butt off. 17 14. Here's Chris Berman in the Toyota halftime show. Boomer. All right, Michael, thank you very much. So, an interesting one in Cleveland for sure as we begin at prime time at halftime. And hi, everybody. Happy Columbus Day to you and to our Canadian friends. Happy Thanksgiving to you. <laughs> 
I thought we'd get that in. Chris uh -huh. Berman along with Tom Jackson. And, well, the good team score at the end of the half like the Giants. But just like we thought, Cleveland would be ahead, right? Well, when you're the defending champions, this is the game that you're going to get from everybody. Yeah, but here are the Browns, just like you thought they yeah, would Yeah, right. <laughs> well, we have them on three times this uh, year on Monday Night Football. Well, the Giants, although it's tough for them so far, they're trying to move to 5-0, and which, of course, would distance themselves a little more from those teams in the tough NFC East that were right on their heels. The Cowboys got the sobering news today that quarterback Tony Romo would be out about a month with a broken pinky on his throwing hand. Yesterday, they found the Arizona desert to be just as eyebrow-raising. Dallas was on the wrong end of an NFL first on a Sunday full of fantastic finishes and teams just hanging in there. Here we go with our fastest three minutes and to the big toaster we go in Arizona. And the opening kickoff for the Cardinals, J.J. Arrington makes a cut. Whip! And he could go all the way. And that quickly, the Cardinals lead the Cowboys. Then went Kurt Warner to Larry Fitzgerald, who was all Arizona. But here comes Dallas. Tony Romo, Marion Barber. Barber does the rest. 70 yards. We're going to 24 all to overtime. But the Cowboys have the ball, but three and out of them. Sean Morey breaking through. Blocks the punt. Monty buys the first time ever a game ended on a block punt for a touchdown. Cards win 30 to 24. Watch what happens when the big guys get the ball. Watch them Pete Kendall. Boink! There it goes. And Oshimago put Tagwe. Good go. Uh, Tagwe. Touchdown. Rams. Mark Bolger. Donnie Avery. Rams. Josh Brown for the winner. 49 yards. Rams. Beat the Redskins for Jim Hazlitt. 1 0 is Rams coach. Back in business are the Eagles. Donovan McNabb passed our own Ron Jaworski for the most yards passing in Eagles history. Ajukwe Parker passed Usain Bolt right here as the Eagles are now 3-3 three three beating the Niners. Phillip Rivers threw three touchdown passes and the Chargers defense stuffed the Pats on fourth down. Chargers all over the pitch at 30-10, they're 3-3. Three three. In the drop, the Colts had not won yet. Peyton Manning to Marvin Harrison twice. They roll Baltimore, they're 3-2. The Jaguars go into Denver and Maurice Jones Drew. How about that run? What? Between defenders, the Jags are three and three. Big game for Tampa Bay. Geno, Geno Hayes, they deliver. Block punt, and the Bucks tie Carolina for first. Fantastic finishes, Ronnie Brown. Here come the Dolphins in Houston ahead of winless Texas. But Matt stumped the shot to Andre Johnson on fourth down. And then on fourth and two, Schaub, his own number. The Texans win for the first time. Congrats to them. Falcons, goal line stand giving Chicago a bit of their own medicine. But with 11 seconds to go, the Bears, Kyle Orton to Rasheed Davis, they have the lead. How does young Matt Ryan make this throw to Michael Jenkins with one second to go? Jason Elam, 48 yards, good. The Falcons are four and two. And then there was Detroit at Minnesota. Dan Orlovsky, that would be his safety. Just like in the Homer Dome, Ken Herbeck hitting a two-run homer. But Detroit came back when Kirk Gibson hit a three-run homer. They led 3-2. Minnesota would win it on a field, but no, on a walk-off homer by Kirby Puckett. Minnesota wins it 12-10. It is baseball time. We thought we'd get a little <laughs> bit of that in. That was a bizarre game. Some, some intriguing games as well. But we um, we talked about the Dallas Cowboys, Tommy, and we talked about game balls. Mm -hmm. How about a quarterback? I got ahead of myself. Mm -hmm. Playing as well, better than anybody in football. Well, playing the best quarterback in the National Football League, and that's Drew Brees. Uh, only one game this year, under 300 yards, passing and on pace, get this, to break Dan Marino's record set in 1984 for passing yards. Look at Arizona's special teammate Sean Maury from Brown University. Eight years in the league, he's got 11 catches, but he blocked the punt on Arizona wins. Well done, Sean. Game ball from us. When we return, more on Tony Romo's injury, what's ahead for Dallas. We get set to read and react when we're back in 30 seconds. This halftime show is presented by Toyota. Moving forward. Saved by... Pardon the interruption, but I'm Mike Wilbon. Tony, how would you describe us to our overseas viewers. I'm Tony Kornheiser, and we're sort of like America's Bex and Posh. I'm Bex. Bex has a comb over? <laughs> ESPN's Pardon the Interruption. Join Tony and Mike for all the latest opinions and headlines weeknights only on NASN.
the Halftime Show with your host, Chris Berman. Shades of uh, Jim Brown against Sam Huff. I don't know. Cleveland shocking the undefeated Giants at half 17-14. Tony Romo out about a month, Tom, for Dallas. Brad Johnson has won a Super Bowl. He's 40 years young now. Will be the quarterback for the Cowboys. At St. Louis, home to Tampa, at the Giants, a bye, and at Washington, perhaps. What did Romo see yesterday that maybe led to this injury that happened in the very beginning? Well, when you, when you talk about the line of protection for a quarterback, this offensive line of Flozell, uh, 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 Adams, and uh, Mark Colombo, those guys have to block better for the quarterback. And you see Romo right there when he goes down. He hurt his hand. Brad Johnson does not have nearly the mobility of Tony Romo, so I can envision him as well getting hit. They're going to have to do a better job of either running the ball or pass protection. But wouldn't you say of all the backups, really top six, seven, or eight, Brad Johnson trust for a month? I, I think Dallas did, a, did their homework. Brad Johnson brings everything to the quarterback position that you want except movement. Quarterback position, which we were waiting on for a little bit, is Eli's older brother, Peyton Manning. Now, he and Marvin Harrison got the headlines yesterday as the Colts roll Baltimore, but you saw something else. With well, uh, again, let's stay front line because we talked about the lack of tackling, the inability to stop the run. Yesterday, they held one of the better rushing teams in the National Football League to 51 yards rushing. That set up everything else that they wanted to do defensively, and that let their offense get on the football field so they could have some success. And they finally won a home game in the Lucas Oil 1,000-gallon drum. <laughs> <laughs> they lost six home games in a row if you include the preseason, include back going back to the RCA dump at the Colts. Hey, they're three and two. Eli Manning, but when have you seen a play like this toward the end of the <laughs> clock winding down? The Plexico Burrs, but the Browns still lead 17-14. We're back with more, including a baseball update in 30 seconds. See? Football on NASN after a ship to power in the